Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the side event uh, on safety and training by G Plus. Um, thank you, G Plus, for hosting this session. Uh, for any questions you have, please uh, do type your questions in the session box. And if you like to see the presentation screen bigger, just a double click on the presentation slide and you have it uh, bigger than the rest of the other tabs that you're having. Um, I'll hand over to Antoro. Um, the floor is yours, Antoro. Thank you. Uh, also, yes, Aaron. Yeah. Yes. Uh, welcome to this uh, G Plus Health and Safety uh, event about the cooperation, implementation, and experience sharing within the offshore wind industry. Uh, my name is uh, Sam Beck. I'm the uh, CIP's Health and Safety Director in uh, Taiwan. I'm responsible for the execution of the Shengfang Shidao and the Shangling projects. I've been in the uh, offshore wind industry for several years, working for a big uh, manufacturer before joining the developer side and also have several years safety experience within production. Uh, I have with me today uh, Alice Chin from the safety team in uh, CIP that will also share a little bit about the knowledge CIP have gained here in, uh, in Taiwan. Uh, CIP is uh, a leading a developer within uh, renewable energy uh, uh, infrastructure, both within uh, offshore wind, but also within solar and thermal. It's a Danish company based out of Copenhagen, but with presence within uh, the region and within uh, or more or less all of uh, the world. We are present in four continents right now as the only offshore wind power developer, uh, where we are working on projects within both US and Asia and Europe. Yeah. I'll hand over to Alice to present the CIP safety philosophy. Thank you so much, Soran. And uh, Arturo, next page five, please. So at CIP, we have a motto, it's our safety policy that as a Danish company that we care so much about our family. So uh, we want our safety implementation to be in safety and also linked to our family. So our motto is, it should be safe for children to send their parents to work. At the end of the day, we would like our project members to come home safely. Next slide, please. I would like to, I would like to share with you why as a company from CIP that we joined G+. That is because we have a high expectation on safety performance. We want our safety implementation to be a world-class safety performance. And of course, uh, as many of you might know that in Taiwan, the offshore wind industry is a new industry. So we do not have a lot of establishment on this side. However, with G+, it has be, be, become a mature market with, uh, with uh, G+, uh, ongoing uh, pro implementation on safety. So what we see in the safety, uh, what we see in the mature market is that we have a lot of experience that we share together and we have learned that from G+. Next slide, please. So we have a core value that how do we implement on safety that is largely in cooperation, open communication and careful planning. And we also share this kind of value together with G+. Next slide, please. This is our safety implementation at CIP. We have our management system, we have our supplier, and we have our HSC policy and vision, et cetera. And together with a lot of great treasury from G+, that is how we implement safety together with a lot of our contractors and together to build our safety culture together. And you will listen to it later on for the speech later. Next slide, please. So as a G plus member, there are some things that we do together with a duty and also we benefited from it greatly. For example, as a G plus member, we regularly meet together to have an open discussion on safety, to have a cooperation together with G plus to have a dialogue with Taiwan OSHA, that is a HSC uh, authority in Taiwan. And as a member, our duty is to submit our HSC data and lessons learned together. 
and regularly we meet together to discuss the offshore wind industry and also how the localization about the safety issues in Taiwan market. So with this vision, that's why we have joined G+. And there are so many good practices that has been well established from G+, that we would like to implement it to our contractors. So from our project members and our developer company, all the way down to the project members on site, the workers on site, and benefiting them and their family. This is why we have joined G+. And later on, we will have some uh, special guests together with us today, and they will introduce some of the things that uh, we would like to share with you about our G Plus journey in Taiwan. So, Barry, um, I'm very happy that you're here with us today. Mr. Barry Robertson, he is the head of New Ventures Taiwan, RWE. He will be sharing with us about the overview of the G Plus and learning from RWE experiences. Uh, Today, if you have any questions, that will be together at the end of the session for the whole session. And thank you, Barry. Okay, thank you very much uh, indeed, Alice uh, and Soren. Uh, and good evening to everyone um, joining us in uh, Taiwan and Asia Pacific. And uh, good morning uh, to anyone who's joining us in from Europe. As I said, my name is Barry Robertson. Uh, I'm the head of the New Ventures for RWE Renewables in Taiwan. And I've been asked by G Plus to introduce the organization uh, as well as to reintroduce uh, RWE. Uh, we have a long history uh, as one of the founding members of, of G Plus, though we have uh, recently been through a few changes. Uh, but more importantly, uh, I'll explain how our experience over the last 20 years uh, in developing offshore wind uh, and other technologies has led uh, HSE uh, being at the core of, of the structure and the outlook uh, for the new company. Next slide, please. So uh, why did G plus form? Why was it necessary? Um, you know, in the first 10 years uh, of the offshore wind industry, all of the companies, either developers or in the supply chain, were just learning uh, how to build and operate these sites. You know, the technology itself was just developing. Uh, you know, turbine size and design was evolving. I mean, the first turbines we installed were only two megawatts, you know, compared to 14 megawatts now. Uh, vessel design, construction methods, they were all being refined almost on the job. Um, unfortunately, this sort of environment increases the potential for accidents to occur, and there were a few, some serious, including fatalities, um, and that could not be accepted as the industry continued to grow if it was going to establish itself as a credible new renewable technology. Next slide, please. Uh, as the industry was developing, it was also found that there seemed to be a, a disconnect between sort of national HSE standards and regulations, which were often put in place before offshore wind uh, started to grow, and uh, standards that were put in place by individual companies such as RWE uh, for their own activities. Uh, and those in turn may vary from the standards put in place by, by other developers, uh, such as CIP. So clearly um, there needed to be a more unified approach uh, in order to rectify these gaps uh, and for the industry as a whole to learn from best practice. Next slide, please. So, by the time we reached 2012, it was really clear that the offshore wind industry needed to cooperate in order to improve HSE. So nine developers agreed to form G9, as it was then, to drive the agenda and the focus on HSE in the offshore wind sector. It, originally, this was just set up within the UK but very quickly expanded to encompass all the developments in Europe. More recently, uh, this has expanded again uh, to take in other regions, such as the US, 
uh, and APAC, uh, with the working group set up uh, here in Taiwan last year, uh, as Alice mentioned previously. Uh, next slide, please. So as you can see, you know, the members from G Plus now include a whole range of different developers who own the assets that are being built, as well as a number of uh, associate members uh, among sort of key supply chain providers, such as the turbine manufacturers, for example, or marine contractors um, through the likes of IMCA that you'll uh, hear about later on from Fritz. Uh, next slide, please. Um, G Plus uh, is an open source for HSE information throughout the industry. It produces incident data reports in order to share data and learning from incidents. Uh, good practice guides on a range of activities based on best practices from across all the G Plus members uh, and safe by design workshops uh, and reports. Uh, they've also developed uh, a toolbox app, which is freely available to all uh, for the purpose of sharing internet learnings and best practice for anyone who wants to understand what's going on. Uh, the next slide, please. Um, there's also a freely available brochure uh, with all the details on G+. I mean, we'll provide uh, all the G plus uh, contacts and links uh, together at the end of the talk today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, one of the key activities uh, for G plus is to lead the engagement with industry and national regulatory authorities. And this is done through the local focal groups, uh, industry stakeholder days, um, like the one you see in the picture, uh, and Safe by Design workshops, uh, all of which are aimed at bringing together the industry uh, to speak with one voice to the regulators and the policy makers. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this brings us to uh, RWE Renewables uh, and how our experience over the last 20 years has informed every part of the company and how we approach offshore wind development, construction and operations, uh, as well as general day-to-day -day business. Uh, next slide, please. As I indicated earlier, um, RW Renewables may be a new name in the industry, uh, but we have a very long history of offshore wind. Uh, RW Renewables was formed this year through the merger of Energy Renewables and Eon Climate and Renewables. Uh, both had substantial uh, renewables portfolios, particularly in offshore wind, where we built the first commercial scale offshore wind sites in the UK in 2003 and 2004. And both were founder members of the G Plus movement. So the merger has effectively doubled the size and the scale of the company uh, and are now amongst the biggest renewable energy developers in the world uh, and the second largest when it comes to offshore wind. Next slide, please. Uh, so this has given us a, a very diverse workforce spread across 17 countries and five continents in offshore wind, as well as in onshore wind, PV, uh, and storage technologies. You know, our operational offshore wind portfolio is spread across five different countries uh, and are currently developing new sites in at least six more countries, including Taiwan, uh, with the Chufong development along with their partners, Asia Cement. So it's very clear to see how important uh, a coordinated response to HSE is. Next slide, please. So with such a sort of diverse and uh, geographically spread workforce, in order to maintain the, the highest standards of HSE, 
it's vital that HSE is central to everything that the company does. Uh, the culture of care that we commit to ensures that we look after our people as well as our assets and the impact to the environment and society in general. I mean, after all, you should, you should never forget about the E in HSE. It's as important as the rest. Next slide, please. So our reserve result uh, of all this experience, um, this focus on health, safety and environment was integrated into every aspect of the new company structure from day one, including our origination and development activities, uh, the engineering, the construction, commercialization and operation of wind farms. Our experience with G Plus uh, has shown that you know, incidents occur, however minor or major, when there are areas in your organisation that don't have the same standard or the same standard of HSE is not adhered to, um, no matter if you're you know, tied to your desk in headquarters or you're inside a wind turbine 40 kilometres off the coast. You know, it applies to everyone and everyone has the individual responsibilities to maintain those standards. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, to, to summarize uh, where we are with the new company uh, and how we've used our experience to integrate HSE and industry learning from G Plus into the new company. Um, in RW Renewables, our HSE focus uh, is organised across five key areas of individual well-being, of occupational safety, asset and plant safety, local environment and impact on the planet and society. So the culture of care uh, is the ultimate manifestation of this HSE focus within the company so that we can all enjoy tomorrow as the company motto goes. And with that, I can uh, hand you back over to uh, yep. Soren and Nina. Thank, Thank you for you, your Barry. time. Thank you for giving an insight in, in why do we have G Plus today? Why was the reason why it was founded back in 2012? So thank you for that. And then I'll hand over the floor to Nina Su from Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy, who talks about the deploying so, of offshore um, health and safety. Uh, yes, Nina. Sorry, there's a leg there. Yeah. Um, I'm Nina Su. I'm the HSC manager from Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy. And today I would like to share with all of you that how the offshore wind HSE best practice to deploy in Next slide, please. Yeah, as you see that, uh, as you all know that uh, Taiwan government, they promote uh, green energy policy quite uh, strongly and uh, Taiwan has successfully There's a wing in Taiwan just and uh, this uh, policy continue and uh, you see that uh, by 2025, 5.5 gigawatt uh, power will be built up, that means there will be 500 turbines in will be set up in the Taiwan water and also 20,000 people will be involved in this job. So in that means it's very important that if you want to promote the policy in Taiwan, so we should have the merger and clear and complete regulation. So safety is one of the most important part to promote this safety. Uh, so these are regulations, so need one or Taiwan 
government and also all the developers, uh, all the offshore wind industry player in Taiwan is to avoid the accident happen during the different phases like the construction phase and also oil phase. So how to uh, to develop this one is just the first one. will be encountered in this area, also specific for the uh, risk. And also, you understanding this one, you must come back to review all the existing HNS and healthy and safety regulations, and also do some kind of relevant safety strategy. And Yeah, thank you. So you can, as you can see these slides, so the current uh, Taiwan's occupational safety and healthy regulation system looks like this. Taiwan's regulation uh, mainly refer to the legal system from US and Japan's. So uh, all the relevant uh, health and safety regulations and based on this parent goal. So basically, there's a four types of uh, cat four category for the regulation. So, and if you, you it's laws. Most of these, um, you can see most of these um, regulations already is it is more focused on the onshore activities, and uh, it covered most of this uh, operational safety for the oil industry. So I say yes, it's. So we should also follow the existing regulation, also regulated offshore wind industry. Why the no is that um, as um, offshore wind industry is new to Taiwan, so that means uh, Taiwan is not, they have no this. Yeah, the unfamiliar part expected from that the Taiwan uh, authority, they more focus on this like uh, offshore wind farm transfer, the crew transfer, and also the offshore lifting operation, and also the offshore working at high, and also the relevant specific electric operations. And indicated stipulated in the local the Taiwanese uh, regulations. Next slide, please. And uh, about this one, so things that the energy policy has been promoted quite quickly. So Taiwan's uh, government also they have some focus on this one. Began to focus on this one. You here you can see the key mark. Since uh, 2018, they have uh, several have uh, several meeting with the developers or the industry um, for this industry to start to conversation. And um, in 2019 January, they published the first guideline. So this is this this guideline is um, to try to supplement the current uh, uh, legislation. MOU cooperation, MOU with UKHSC. Why they choose the UKHSC? Uh, it's quite a simple that because uh, Europe is the world leader for the ultra wing uh, power. Uh, so and also they have a mature quite a policy and also legislation, all the professional technical capability.
but this is a common part. At the same time, G plus also cross out to of Europe and establish the G plus APEC group here in Taiwan. So and uh, soon we also quite G plus also continue to cooperate with uh, uh, Taiwan Ocean. of how that one and the implementation for the Taiwan OSHA and for the all, all already uh, two years that you can see they established the safety guideline the first one the first step always so refer also refer to the international standards and have a, a On their inspection team, so they assigned the people, the inspector, to 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 receive GW training in order to conduct this uh, offshore wing inspection, and then they do do this kind of inspection, offshore inspection, and also onshore inspection, uh, since um, in Formosa one, and also currently the like, Yunling uh, Yunling projects, and next slide, please. Yeah, and also G plus at this moment, as you, I say that uh, G plus also cross to Europe from Europe to Taiwan. That at this moment, what we do for Taiwan, so excuse the wing fund here. So we we have many uh, topic can be discussed to share, and also so to see the profile for the risk and uh, local regulator in engagement we not just the uh, taiwan osha but also the coast guard we discuss uh, the emergency response uh, try to say that we have the good practice guideline from uh, g plus so we translate that one try to uh, to next slide please yes so this is a guideline from that uh, g plus that uh, most of this one already translated into the uh, traditional chinese versions total in seven next slide please to stop so uh, for the future it's quite clear to indicate in the first uh, that uh, from that uh, OSHA and also have a uh, summit with the UK HSC is clear say that they were focused on this four aspect that they will start to have a review identify the gaps in the current legislations and uh, try to reform their experience and also the inspection person the tra training and the competence so that will be kind uh, introduced as to let them know the more specific HSE, HSE profile risk and also how to do this uh, kind of uh, safety induction assistant and also experience training and also the strategy from onshore inspections. So this is also their goal to, 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 to achieve. And the last one is about the accident investigation and data analysis and usage. So this is also some set up the criteria for inspection for offshore. And also there's some kind of enforcing authority for the accident and also how to use the data to, 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 to see the trend. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's all for, for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. That is a great speech and give us a good background about the Taiwanese development on safety and also G plus roles in it. So I would like to welcome Mr. Fritz Weidmann as a director of Van Ord Offshore Wind from Germany. I would like to give us a speech about the safety training with G plus health and safety practices in our young industry. Um, Mr. Weidmann, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Alice. Yeah, good day, ladies and gentlemen. I think we can just start straight away. Arturo, next slide, please. A short introduction about myself. Yes, I'm a German. Um, I'm the director of Van Oort Offshore Wind Germany. Uh, I worked 12 years serving as a Navy helicopter pilot, sailing around the world. Uh, thereafter, a 10 years experience, I was the head of the QHSE for a shipping company working in oil and gas, and then followed by 10 years, I now uh, experience in the offshore wind construction industry, being uh, the head of uh, the HSE department for Van Oort Offshore Wind. 
Next slide, please. Just to give you an idea, uh, who is uh, Van Oort? What are we doing? Uh, Van Oort is active in four markets, basically. Uh, we are a family owned company uh, founded 151 years ago. We employ 4,500 employees and we operate uh, about 70 vessels worldwide. Uh, a lot of uh, people know us from the dredging part. Uh, we've built the Palm and uh, the World in Dubai and the Suez Canal too, etc. Uh, we also have uh, our business unit working in the offshore oil and gas, uh, land infrastructure in the Netherlands, and last but not least, uh, the offshore wind business unit. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, today. Next slide, please. Yeah, our offshore wind activities, we can go straight to the next Arturo, sorry. We as a, a contractor, uh, we are busy with uh, the foundation installation and uh, scour protection. We also focus on turbine and blade installation and uh, also the cable laying in field and export cables is our part of the business. Next slide, please. And offshore wind, yeah, we've got uh, quite a track record. We've installed uh, thousands of wind turbines and hundreds of kilometers of uh, cables were laid. Um, you can see in the lower right corner also our activity now in, in Taiwan and we are stretching out for the US. Uh, next slide, please. That means our focus areas are uh, in the US, in Europe still and in Asia. Uh, for offshore wind only, we have uh, four uh, offices. One is in the UK, one in Germany, one in the Netherlands, and one in Taipei. And next slide, please. Yeah, let's talk about content. Huh? Different countries, uh, same goal. As I mentioned, we work really worldwide and we have the experience that wherever we go, uh, all the authorities uh, do really their best to set the right doers. They say safety first and they want to achieve it everywhere. That is uh, the good news, let's say. So from my perspective as an uh, experienced contractor, I think it's quite easy uh, to follow and act in compliance to the rules, but only, there's a little butter, only if they are clear and well defined uh, for offshore works and uh, if, it's, if that is the case, it's just a matter of planning and resources, i.e. time and costs. But the more the set rules differ from proven standards, the more complicated it gets. And for us as a contractor, the more costly. And for our employees, uh, the work also become more unsafe. And that is really uh, why Van Oort and also myself have the ambition to contribute to industry and safety standards. Next slide, please. Yeah, for many years, Van Ord is an active member uh, of the IMCA, uh, NG+. Um, I think the general idea of both organizations is to learn from each other and uh, to create proven industry standards. And that worked from our perspective as a contractor perfectly quite well, or worked perfectly for diving, uh, for boat transfers, uh, and also walk to work gangways or working at height. IMCA uh, was founded in uh, 1972 and is really representing now uh, about 800 uh, members, member companies uh, who are working in the oil and gas mainly. And now uh, IMCA Renewables focuses also on uh, the renewable sector. They have a quite a technical and uh, safety focus and quite a library already of uh, back practices. And uh, it was already mentioned today, uh, G+. Yeah, it's a global health and safety organization uh, representing the offshore wind industry and the members of uh, G plus are the lead operators and owners uh, of offshore wind farms. Now setting up uh, not only the European but also the APEC focal group and now also the US uh, group focal group is uh, in planning. Thank you. Next slide please. Yeah, we are part of it and uh, we live and we like the best practices and all the guidelines. So what are the benefits then uh, within our industry to use them? 
Um, I think, uh, it, first of all, it's not reinvention of the wheel. It's not discussing each work method and each methodology again and again. If we have a clear guideline and an industry standard, it's quite easy to, to use it and to make use of it and it accepted by our clients. It increases uh, definitely the motivation of our people because they don't have to start from zero. Uh, no double uh, trainings are needed and also no double medical checks. So they are quite flexible uh, in, all, in the areas they work, uh, in the countries they work. So that helps a lot. It's really an increased efficiency. We can optimize uh, the work methods and uh, we are then not only having the feeling, but when we know we are compliant and we know exactly what is right and what is wrong, if we can agree on certain standards. It leads to a cost reduction on equipment and maintenance and also a cost reduction in administration, training and planning. So we as Van Oort, as a marine contractor, we have referenced several of our processes and procedures in our management system to those industry guidances to ensure the right quality and, and safety. And as an example, I mentioned them before, uh, diving is uh, quite important for us and is quite a hazardous uh, activity. Walk to work, lifting, working at height, etc. Uh, all those uh, guidances and uh, good practices uh, we have connected to our management system already so that each of our um, project teams uh, use them, consider them, and uh, can give me feedback and give us feedback where is the need maybe for an update or improvement. I just uh, taken two screenshots you see on the right hand side uh, is really worth going there. You will see the IMCA publications and also the good practices uh, guidelines uh, available for everyone uh, on the websites of IMCA and G+. Next slide please. Okay, if we have all those nice uh, guidances, how to get them, um, yeah, not only to the shop floor, but also to our uh, supply chain. Uh, mainly if you go to a, to a new country, let's say, and we work with uh, new subcontractors, uh, we want to make sure that they know about it and they know about our expectations and that we can agree on certain standards. So that is why Van Oort organizes, uh, you might call them safety days or even wider QHSE days, where we invite uh, our clients, client representatives and our, so our subcontractors. We sit together, we run through our uh, scope of work and we make clear what our expectations are and what we think are the right uh, safety standards for this project. So then we will have an, uh, yeah, a joint commitment and uh, this is only also a chance for our uh, stakeholders to get familiar with each other. Uh, in case of any problems, hicc hiccups, etc., it's a lot easier to communicate if you know already uh, your counterpart in, uh, in other areas of work. And next slide, please. Yeah, and then uh, down to the shop floor. How do we translate those standards, those best practices? Um, if we have to work with different um, people. So at first, I think it's important to appreciate that there are cultural differences and beliefs. We encourage uh, our employees uh, to explore and understand the local culture. So we want to adapt. Uh, we overcome the language barriers uh, at first also by using simple language like, uh, like safety rules. You see them on the right hand side. Uh, some call them golden rules, etc. It's quite easy to explain what we expect uh, to the workforce. And uh, we have also uh, those translated in, in all languages wherever we are and wherever we work. So all Van Oort employees speak at least English and also we hire local people uh, for Taiwan also uh, talking or speaking uh, Chinese or Mandarin and they can act as uh, translators. We also try to employ local crew and workers with some basic level of English and uh, we use uh, visuals more than only text to communicate. Yeah, and last but not least, we also make the effort obviously to translate uh, plans and procedures and policies so that everyone uh, is able to, to read what is expected and how to work. And uh, yeah, last but not least, uh, be respectful at all times, that always works. 
Thank you very much. I think next slide is the last one, Arturo. Yeah, thank you. I hand over back to uh, Søren and Alice. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you, Fritz, and thank you also to Nina and Barry for this. And now the floor is open for a Q&A session. And I can see we already have an, uh, a question from Benson about the data, uh, use of D plus data in an incorrectly or misinterpreted way in Taiwan. If uh, anybody of the speaker has experience in how this can be prevented in the future. I don't know, Barry, you've been in D plus uh, for a long time and been involved in all these setup on, uh, on data and all that. Do you have any take on this, on, on how we can avoid that data and all that being misinterpreted or misused? Uh, yes, I can understand why you know, there is a problem there. And I think the easiest way to do it is just to get our um, connections um, much deeper uh, with the local authorities in whatever jurisdiction, um, Taiwan especially in this example, uh, with OSHA, um, you know, after after one or two meetings and passing on a little bit of information, um, it, it's not enough to get them to fully understand what it is we're doing. Um, and as I mentioned at the start on, on my presentation, we had a similar issue in the UK, where there were guidelines in place, but a lot of them were done, you know, for oil and gas. Let's face it. Uh, and so when offshore wind started, they didn't quite fit or something got put in, but not something else, and it slowly evolved. And I can see that, that the same thing is happening here, uh, and we just need to keep engaging with them and get them to understand that it's the full picture they need to, to engage with and not just bits of it uh, um, in order to get to the position that we are in Europe now. Yes, good, good. I can see that they're almost leaning a little bit over to the question from Andy that how confident are the panel that the uh, industry recognized guidelines would be uh, accepted and implemented in the APEC region, that all of the D plus and IMCA has been doing, that that would be implemented. I think it's more open question to all three of you. Yeah, I think the signals uh, are already good, uh, Søren. Um, the, the, the interest is there. Um, uh, the, the, the discussions are there. Uh, it's, it needs obviously uh, details also to explain how we, we get so far. Why, why did we develop those guidelines and, and the best practices? And that uh, had a very good reason because of all the incidents, accidents and, and things which happened uh, in the past before. And uh, I know also from what Barry just mentioned for UK, I know for Germany, uh, you, you you had already some rules for oil and gas. I think that helped already. In Germany, there was nothing. And the people, uh, the authorities were coming with the onshore uh, vision, onshore point of view. And then you had to discuss uh, yeah, even the, the most simple things for seafarers or, or, or working offshore. And in, in some countries, that is exactly the same. So it needs really... It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. No? You have to explain, you have to show them, and you have to get them involved and uh, not just coming there, dropping your procedures and tell them that is how we do it. Uh, you have to listen, you have to negotiate, you have to discuss and then come to an agreement. And I guess, uh, unfortunately, by time, uh, we will have uh, hopefully those standards also introduced and accepted uh, in, in new regions. Yeah, good, good. I have a question also here. How can the D plus contribute to or plan to deep dive in Taiwan market on health and safety? How can we help with that as a D plus with the knowledge we're sitting with within that forum? Um, I think one of the things for that could be just overcoming the language barrier. Um, we, are, we are making a start as far as that's concerned. Uh, a lot of the um, good practice guides that G plus uh, have um, published uh, are now being done uh, in the local language here uh, and presented across into the, the local authorities. Um, you know, they have a tremendous advantage here that they're not starting from scratch because they have um, the developers here with the experience that, that are bringing um, these uh, practiced 
um, health and safety procedures in. Um, yeah. And that, that's a huge, huge advantage that they have here. Um, they just have to be, um, we have to be mindful of the, the new um, area of the world that we're in uh, and make sure that we are being understandable uh, and um, accepting uh, regional differences. Fritz, this is more a question to you. How does Van Aard as a company, how do you benefit from being in, in, in uh, G Plus and also IMCA? What is the benefit as a member of being in this? Yeah, I think uh, one benefit is for sure that we can bring our ideas and also our concerns uh, to our, uh, let's say, also clients uh, uh, who are operating worldwide to all the developers and wind farm operators. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a chance basically to contribute. Uh, we can share our lessons learned. We learn from each other. We can uh, review. We've got the chance to review and to develop a new industry standards, which will directly uh, affect us. Uh, and uh, by that we can from a lean perspective, we can reduce waste. Huh? All the the other procedures which might be in place, we can dump and, and focus only on, on the best practices. That is, uh, for me, uh, the benefits we are getting from... Yeah, it costs also uh, resources, yeah, time and, and, and people to contribute, but I think the benefits overweight uh, those, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, parts. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I agree. Uh, a question here from Gary about uh, if the operators are audit their service partners uh, supporting the construction and maintenance on the site to ensure that they are working to best practice. Uh, who can add Nina or Barry? Nina? We can't hear you, Nina. Um, yes, yes, I mean, we, we've got to do a, a full and thorough audit to make sure we are confident that um, you know, whatever service provider we are bringing in from a new um, area, a new regime, um, is at a standard that, that we would be comfortable with. Now, we can always provide you know, our own training, our own guidance, uh, and make sure that even if they don't have the background and standard that we may perhaps be expecting, that we can be confident that they can um, get up to the level that, that, that we expect of them and make sure they're clear that they know what we expect of them. But, um, you know, it is very important to make sure that the, the very basic audit of who it is you're bringing on uh, and what their history is like is, is absolutely crucial. Yeah. Yes, I think that's linked very much up to the last question I had uh, prepared was uh, how can the T plus vision on safety impl be implemented to all project members? And then very much link up to what you're saying, Barry, that doing audits, doing regular visits to our contractors on our side to make sure that they simply are living up to the intention of everything that's created by T plus. Mm -hmm. Yes, and making sure that you, as the lead contractor, are you know, monitoring um, the sites, monitoring um, the practices that are going on, um, be it you know spot checks or on-site managers, and making sure that they can speak you know, the local language. I think that's really important. Um, quite often, it's a subcontractor uh, that, that's come in who, who may not be fully aware of and what we're expecting from them in English. So we have to make sure that we are able to communicate with them and make sure everybody understands what we expect of them from health and safety on any site in the industry. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I don't have any more questions. Are there any more questions from the people listening in to this session here? If not, then I will say thank you to Barry, Nina and Fritz for giving an insight in, in D+, and all the knowledge that is uh, gained over the years after D+, was developed, and all the knowledge that they're 
now are capable and willing to share with everybody that's interested in making the best possible safety in the Taiwanese offshore wind power market. So thank you for all of you to share the knowledge and for thank you for all for listening into this session here. Yeah, thank you very much for thank your interest. You. Thank you. Thank you.